At the intersection of business and politics, is there a Colorado market for psychedelic mushrooms? This November, Colorado voters will determine whether to decriminalize the personal possession, growing and sharing and use of psychedelic mushrooms. Proposition 122. Ed, give us the rundown. Now, this is one of the measures that is citizen led that is going to be on the November ballot. And basically it says we're going to decriminalize the sharing, the use, but not the sale necessarily of uh, psilocybin and properties from psychedelic mushrooms, as well as several other uh, natural plant based substances. The key here is that the proposition sets up a market that is not going to be like what we know right now in cannabis. These are not going to be corner stores setting up, selling mushrooms to whoever walks in. These are going to have to be what are called therapeutic or wellness centers, where people are going to have to make an appointment. They're going to have to go through a session with a licensed therapist uh, that it could be anywhere from an hour to an all-day session, where they're going to let them use these psychosalic substances, and they're going to monitor them and make sure that they get out okay. Now, if that sounds odd, yes, it is. We've never seen a market quite like this set up in Colorado before. Oregon is actually the only state that's going through it right now. They're setting up something like this, but it hasn't gone into play yet. So what we're talking about is creating a new kind of wellness center. This is not get a massage, sit in the spa. This is going to be using a, a very psychoactive substance. Uh, and, and, and the question is, how much interest is there going to be in this if this passes in November? Yeah, you know, and there's that question. Is there really a demand for psychedelic substances? Now, I get it. They're, they are saying that this is not like cannabis, as you alluded to earlier, Ed, that people won't just be coming in for large quantities on a regular basis. But how much of a market is there really? I read in your article that some people think the commercial interest could come rushing in here. I, I don't know. This just doesn't strike me as something that is that widely used. And I could certainly see those, uh, many of those in the mental health community and other uh, parts of the, 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 the health community being concerned about how this plays out. Are you hearing anything from the health community or, or, or any conversations about the demand for this type of psychedelic substances in Colorado? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, I think for right now, if people are using these substances, a lot of them are not thinking, oh, how do I go in and use them with someone guiding me through this process? So this is is going to have to be frankly more expensive than cannabis in a lot of ways. You're going to have to pay not just to purchase these substances, but to use them for someone who is a licensed professional to guide you through this. And we're still coming up with the licensing, uh, or if this passes, the state will still be coming up with the licensing apertures who can go through that as well. Uh, there are some that are worried that this is going to cater to an upper class of people who want to use psychedelic substances. You know, you're going to have to pay out a fair amount. It could be in the hundreds or the thousands of dollars for one of these sessions, depending on how you're going to use it. Now, medical professionals are divided on this. There are a lot that believe, and they, they point to studies saying there have been uh, proof that this can help with PTSD or some other conditions. But they, they say the way this is being set up is not being set up by the medical community. This is being set up uh, as an economic stratosphere, as you will. Like here, walk in, do it, leave. And the medical community doesn't have a chance to weigh in on the rules. It doesn't have a chance to use the research about, hey, who is this helping? Who is this not helping? What kind of effects are we getting from this? So there's a lot of worry that maybe we're setting up a, another retail market a la marijuana that's not going to go to the health benefits that some of its advocates speak to right now. And I think there's going to be a lot of questions, as I said before, about is this, is this a viable market? Is there, quote unquote, inequities in terms of who has access to this? Is it really effective? So many questions, which I think also plays into the ultimate question, at least this November, is does this pass? And if it does, what should we expect? Any thoughts on what happens if this were to pass? I'm not seeing any polls out there right now, but yeah. frankly, Colorado has been a very permissive state when it comes to, you know, the, the second state in America, one of the first two states, I should say, that legalized recreational marijuana use. Um, Denver in 2019 passed something that was on this vein, decriminalizing uh, this, but not necessarily setting up a market like this. I don't know whether this passes, yeah. but it's, uh, I think if it does, it's going to be very very important how this is then structured, uh, whether people are going to be more open to using substances in the future or whether this, as some of the opponents who are 
pro-mushroom, but anti-Prop 122 saying uh, this is going to stratify the market. This is not going to open it up. This is not going to make it open to everybody to use. And, and whether or not we are just creating a new business interest rather than truly allowing freedom uh, of using personal substances. Yeah, well, I think there's going to be a lot of conversation about that. And, and, you know, is it good ultimately for people's health? Is there really a market here? Will we be talking about should this pass in November a year from now and they've gotten the rules in place or however long it takes for that to happen that this is a job creator, you know, in our state? Who knows? I think those are all questions that perhaps you at the Number Business Journal and we at the Nine News business team will be talking about in the months and years ahead. Ed, I think that's all we have for now. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on the Business Buzz. For Nine News, I'm Ryan Frazier. And for Ed Sealover with the Denver Business Journal, till next time.